This morning, we celebrate All Saints Day. This is the day that we remember, as the songs reminded us, of those who have gone before us. And as we affirm that every life bears the image of God. In this season of Thanksgiving, it is the perfect time to be grateful and reflect on all the people who have touched our lives. The ones who loved, supported, challenged, and encouraged us to become who we are today. So on this day, as we remember, we also pause to note the significance that is the interconnectedness of our life. I always think of my parents on this day. Since they died when I was in my early 20s, I missed a great deal. I have found myself through the years wondering what advice they might give or what they would think or say about something that was happening to me. I have felt so many times that gap that I think exists in my life because they were gone so early. I miss their wisdom. I miss their love. I miss their voices. And I wish there had been more opportunities to learn life lessons from both of them. We were just getting to the place where I thought they actually knew something. And then, sadly, they were gone. I'm not sure if my parents would qualify for sainthood, but through the years, I have learned to appreciate that saints come in all shapes and sizes. Many saints are known to the world. Some are known only to us. Traditionally, on All Saints Day, we pause and give thanks especially for those whose faith has made a difference in our world. Some people that we honor on this day are ones that literally have transformed the world. Many were people who courageously sought justice and loved mercy. They were people who often sacrificed their comfort and their lives for God's dream of the world. Yet the saints did not do it by themselves or all on their own. It seems that their paths of life were woven with the lives of countless others. Grounded in God's faithfulness, their life-changing ways were mediated through communities of support and inspiration. Perhaps communities very much like ours. Their courage and wisdom, their strength and sacrifice seem to create an energy that joins the living and the dead in what the church calls the communion of all saints. I love that on this day, we celebrate the ongoing significance of all of their lives. While on All Saints Day, traditionally we think of the people who lived centuries ago, the writer and nun, Joan Chichester, reminds us that we have also been surrounded by saints in the near past. Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolence drove the British out of India. Martin Luther King Jr., preacher of nonviolence and equality, began the long walk towards civil rights in the United States. Thomas Merton, a cloistered monk, led a peace movement from behind monastery walls and helped to bring the war machine in Vietnam to a halt. Eleanor Roosevelt, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, made a role for women in international politics. Mother Teresa brought the plight of the poor to the sight of the world. Dorothy Day lived a life of protest for more than 50 years and gave the process of public protest both spiritual grounding and public intractability. Chichester says these were people who simply would not go away. They would not quit, they would not stop, even in the face of apparent failure. They each had a daring and determined public witness 
and hundreds of others like them around the world joined them and stirred the hearts of others. These people changed things. They gave direction in times of despair. They gave light when institutions went dark with cowardice or corruption. They went down roads others had not dared to go before these people took the first step where millions now walk. These people risked their reputations, their support, their friendships, their positions, their jobs, and their very lives to give voice to the voiceless, to empower the people, to halt the machines of domination, even if it meant laying down their own bodies to do it. The church does call these people saints, but perhaps that's unfortunate because the word does have a foreign ring to it. For those of us who grew up Protestant, it's a word that we didn't use. Dorothy Day once said that she didn't like the power of the word. She didn't like the use of it. She said in her own style, don't call me a saint because I don't want to be dismissed so easily. There is something about the word saint, obviously, that dampens the meaning of their lives. Chichester says people like these were not marshmallow figures in stained glass windows. They were models, heroes, icons, the stars of their time who made lives that were real, who did what the scriptures could only talk about. They were the worthy and the brave, the simple and the centered ones who saw truth and lived it, whatever the cost. Interestingly, these people, though, are not always the ones who make the headlines. Living in our day, in our time, I think we forget that in every age there are people whose leadership is bogus, whose life maps are warped, whose leadership leads to the grave of the soul as well as of the body. But while these people seem to be the ones controlling the world, in reality we are surrounded, as the scripture says, by this great cloud of witnesses who have lived this life before us. By their very lives in every age, in every era, they prove to us that it is possible to be different than those around us, those who live to exploit life here rather than grow in the light of God. In direct contrast, she says these saints who lived in the light of God were about living wildly rather than flamboyantly. St. Francis, St. Ignatius, St. Julian of Norwich, the Gandhis and the Kings, the Mertens and Mother Teresa's and Dorothy Day's, as well as all of the less known heroes, can become the road signs of our age, of our time, of our lives. These saints, these people, can become for us living maps to another way of being alive. If we open ourselves up to their lives, they can teach us what it means to live well, to be productive, to make a difference, to grow to our full stature as human beings. So how do we learn from these heroes and from these saints? The people who were close to us, that we loved, and the people who were far away, but lived lives of inspiration. The theologian Bruce Epperly asserts that All Saints Day is about aspiration. It is about God asking ordinary people to do extraordinary things. The mystic Meister Eckhart 
from the 14th century once noted that all things are words of God and we can play our role as revealers of grace, singing God's graceful melodies by responding to the needs of the world, letting our light shine so that the world may know that God is present, seeking beauty, healing, and justice in our midst. Perhaps more than ever, we do need the vision of the saints. With a tax plan looming that elevates the rich, it does seem that only greed abounds. With programs for those most in need on the cutting room floor, it does appear that individualism is what carries the day. Since guns have become our national idols, it does feel like violence is always just below the surface. And when we fear that our earth and our very existence stands in the balance, corporate greed is hard to swallow. But what might happen if we walked the path of the saints? What might happen if we walked the path of our loved ones and listened to their wisdom? What might it be like if we claimed our humanity and with humble hearts took on our role as saints, as healers of the earth in our time and our place? What would change if we, in our gratitude, made a commitment to transform our world, faithfully living out our lives in the light of God's dream for the world. This morning, as we give thanks for the saints among us, around us, and before us, who are your saints? Who has shaped your life and your world? And what kind of saint is God calling you to be in this our time and our place? Amen.